Yesterday, I had an opportunity to tour the Virginia Air and Space Center and see the Apollo 12 capsule up close and personal, the only moon mission to be struck by lightning, which nearly led to the failure of the mission and an important lesson that we learned to never launch in the middle of thunderstorms. But that being the case, it was amazing to see this capsule and once again keep in mind that this was the only thing from the Saturn V that actually survived. This massive rocket and everything involved with it, the only thing that was left over was the capsule. But get ready to check it out up close in person along with many other relics from the history of aerospace. I hope you enjoy it. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and check it out. from the era of the Vietnam War. We have the Huey and followed up by the F-4 Phantom. It's kind of hard to imagine. Something this small and this fragile flying around in Vietnam being subjected to everything that the VC and the NVA could throw at it be one of the most terrifying experiences that I can think of compared to the choppers we have today this thing is a flying shooting gallery And we lost a lot of them. Family friend of mine got shot down in one of these and lay there in the jungle for two days staring up at the trees seriously injured and wondering whether he was going to die first or if the VC were going to find him first. And the thing that he remarked on was the fact that he was just thinking about how beautiful all of it was, how beautiful the jungles of Vietnam actually were while he was lying there injured. Kind of amazing what goes through a man's mind, I suppose, when he thinks he's going to die. And way up here, you have an early test version of the F-16. Of course, became one of the most successful aircraft, combat aircraft in history. And then we'll take a little walk by of our F-4 Phantom, which is definitely one of my favorite aircraft. Really, I'm admire both the F-4 and its arch rival in Vietnam, the MiG-21. Both of those were fantastic aircraft. And the MiG-21 is still in use in many countries today, mostly in Africa. And for those of you who are big fans of nuclear weapons, we have the Pershing-2 intermediate range ballistic missile a weapon that was decommissioned as a result of disarmament treaties with the Soviet Union enormous thing 
given that it's only a an intermediate range of missile. And again, an unpleasant memory of some of the more horrifying things in our civilization. So here we have the Hawker Sidley, which is a, used for research purposes. There's a great deal of resemblance to the Harrier jump jet just from looking at it. Rather interesting. Followed up by the F-84 back there. F-84 Thunderstreak. Which was a contemporary with the F-86 Sabre. F-106 Delta Dart. All-weather interceptor. Retired in the 1980s. Pretty looking plane. To get our perspective from behind, from the F4 to the Huey. Those of you who are actually into seeing the real thing, we have the Apollo 12 capsule. astonishing just how tiny this thing is to consider that this played host to three astronauts for the amount of time that it did obviously this isn't the whole thing but only the part that re-entered and then you can see the astonishing amount of punishment that the heat shield took during the inferno of re-entry. Quite an astonishing experience to see something that's traveled hundreds of thousands of kilometers through deep space. You don't get an opportunity to see that every day. inside. And once again, not a mock-up. The real thing. <laughs> and the tiny space that these guys had to contend with. the amount of time that they were in flight. Quite amazing indeed. It's also worth mentioning that Apollo 12 was the only moon mission, the only Saturn V, to receive a lightning strike at the beginning of the mission, which caused a number of system failures, which they were, hope they were fortunately able to rectify. Pretty cool to see this in person for the first time. And Mercury, significantly before Apollo. Again, the thought of anybody flying around. In 
orbit in something this tiny is kind of difficult to comprehend. Truly amazing, we managed to get to space. And then you have the Orion test vehicle. I believe this one was actually used for abort testing. The Orion, if we're comparing that to what we just looked at with the Apollo, the difference is striking. This is, once again is just a test vehicle that was used over 10 years ago for abort testing. More spacious, but nevertheless, not nearly large enough for deep space purposes. Once again, it's a... The Orion's been put through its paces to a great degree during its long history and has really been ready for passengers for a long time. What's holding everything up is SLS. And as you can see here, this is one of the earlier iterations of SLS. It's clear how long we've been waiting for something to carry this baby. A lot bigger. One of those little things that you need if you're gonna land on the moon. You need a way to simulate the effect of one-sixth gravity while you're trying to set down on the surface, which is far from easy. And so this is one of the test vehicles that was used in order to train astronauts to try to land on the lunar surface, battling only against one-sixth gravity as opposed to normal gravity, which proved to be a much greater challenge when you're used to flying and operating in one type of gravity and instead you have to learn how to set down something entirely different. It complicates matters and even though we have an ambition to do this in automated fashion in the future, I am certain that NASA is going to require some sort of pilot override so we're going to need, no matter what we're using, Lunar Starship or something else, we're going to need a way to simulate landing in a reduced gravity situation with whatever we end up using. And that's not going to be an easy thing in the least. And here we go with a mock-up of the Viking. Impressive looking, old school probe much of Langley or much of the Viking program was managed at Langley and then we have more recognizable rover something that was determined to be necessary as we proceeded to explore Mars and then of course the thing that annoys me the most a single sentence no conclusive signs of life were found generally accurate but it would be very annoying it's very annoying indeed to think that we really know a lot more than that and none of it is described an intriguing lunar inflatable lunar habitat. 
is one of the many concepts that they have here. This is a pretty modest habitat. I assume there might be multiple floors in this thing if it were completed, but certainly a hell of a lot bigger than the LEM. Ryan too really but maybe this could be a possibility at some point inflatable habitats are definitely uh, looking more and more promising On the Gemini test capsule went through so many different processes in the early days to make sure that we could get things done right the first time obviously because you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna get another shot at it So obviously there's a lot to see here, quite a few aircraft that I haven't talked about because I'm not really much of an expert when it comes to aviation. I tried to focus mostly on space flights and also some of the aircraft that were in service when we were conducting the Apollo missions. This is an amazing place. They're actually renovating it, which means I think they're gonna have a lot more to see here in the future. So if you get a chance to pay a visit to Norfolk, Virginia, don't miss this amazing museum. And until next time, stay angry about space.